Jai Jamgavi. I would like to invite uh, our Jaina President, uh, Bindesh Bhai, to introduce the uh, next speaker. Bindesh Bhai, Jai Jai. Pranam Jai Jainendra. It is my honor to provide you brief introduction of Dr. Bipin Doshi, a notable Jain intellectual from Mumbai, India. By profession, Dr. Doshi is a physician, now dedicated to community service. Dr. Doshi is a Jain philosopher. He has played a pivotal role in establishing a Jain chair at Mumbai University and Jain Education and Research Center at Sumandip Vidyapit in Baroda. Dr. Bipin Doshi is also an accomplished author. He has penned several books. Additionally, Dr. Doshi has conducted research on ancient Jain personalities and has produced multiple professional dramas on such topics. In addition, he is serving as a vice president of Virayatam, founder secretary and past vice president of Jito Apex, and involved in Jain Vishwabharati Institute. This Parishan lecture series is on subject Practical Jainism, Basics of Jain Philosophy. And with today's session, will be on Tap, Penance, and Well-being. This session will be recorded and be available on the Jaina YouTube channel. Please welcome Dr. Bipin Doshi. Jai Jinendra. Jai Jinendra to all of you. Uh... Thank you, Mindesh Bhai, for the brief introduction. And I hope Sarvi Sata Me Honge. Aj Parishan ka sixth day. For Sthanakwasi Parampara, it is probably the fifth day. Today, my topic is penance or top, as we commonly speak in our language. First of all, we should be very clear about some important points about penance. Penance is not the monopoly of one religion. Penance is always there in most of the religion, whether it is Christianity, whether it is Islam, or whether it is Hinduism. Obviously, they were different, different kind of penance, as we also have a very Many kinds of penance. Now, top, as understood by us, as on today, is usually related to fasting. The person is doing fasting for one day, three days, two days, three days, eight days, and one month or 15 days. And our focus is mainly on the Fasting or controlling your ahar sangna, something which is related to food. This is a very wrong notion because when we discussed about tapa, you will understand that fasting is one kind of tapa. But there are another 11 types of tapa which are equally important and probably some of them are more important. Anything which is related to fasting is considered to be the, is considered to be penance, but it is lower kind of penance. There are higher kinds of penances which can bring more purification than just controlling the fasting. When we study Nau Tattva, what is the place of tapa or penance in this concept of nine tattvas? I have discussed in past that nine tattvas are the nine essential aspects which we are supposed to understand to know the path of liberation. To know the path of liberation in Jain philosophy, there are very three important. There are three important stages. One is who am I? Try to understand what is my existence, my consciousness, my body. That is who am I? The second is that our purpose is to liberate ourselves, liberate from miseries. Let's not even use the word moksha. We all strive to liberate from the difficulties, adversities, miseries. So our focus is to liberate from miseries. And Tirthankar Paramatma has said that if you really want to liberate from miseries, there are a few things which you must know. And there he gives the concept of nine tattvas. In Digamra Parampara, 
we might say that uh, it might be uh, seven tattvas. The this is the because they consider pap and punya as a part of ashram. That's fine. So you are supposed to understand these nine tattvas or seven tattvas. And if you understand that, then you have to practice what we call samyak charitra. That means now you practice. After you know, you practice. I'll give a very simple example. That if a housewife wants to prepare certain kind of shira or certain kind of uh, sweet, she has to understand what is required and what is to be known before she starts preparing shira or sweet. Similarly, if we want to have the journey for liberation, there are few things that we must know. And out of these nine tattvas, one tattva which is called nirjara. The nirjara means that trying to shed off all your karmic particles. Nirjara occurs in two ways. One is that I put my efforts to get rid of all the particles, karmic particles which I have accumulated. And the second way is that there is an automatic nirjara. Because it is the nature of karmic particle that once they are bonded, a time will come when they will get set off automatically. When we talk about tappa, it is not the release of the particle automatically, but it is release of the karmic particle by our efforts, by our uh, endeavors. And this is what is called tappa. Tapas, uh, tapas, uh, nir, nir, tapascha nirjara. Tapascha nirjara means tap is the cause of nirjara. Now, what, you know, if we go to Dasvaikalik Sutra, there is one Dasvaikalik uh, Sutra, uh, Agam, uh, Agam uh, Grantha. There is one very important uh, sentence which is made and which we know many of us uh, do recite this in our puja. Dhammo mangal mukkitam ahinsa sanjamo tavo. What is most auspicious religion or what is the most auspicious aspect of the religion? Now, most auspicious aspect of religion is described by a phrase called ahinsa sanjamo tavo. It's an Ardhamagdi language, so it's ahinsa, sanyam and tap. If we put it in a very simple language. Now this, it's not three things. It is only one. What is one? That is ahinsa. To strengthen your ahinsa or non-violence, you need to have a sanyam and tap. So the sanyam and tap are added with the word ahinsa is to tell that how will you practice non-violence or how will you practice ahinsa. And there, sanyam. Now, top actually gets included into sanyam, but still, to make it a little more elaborative and to make the common people understand, we use the word because what is most important religion? Ahinsa. That's all. But to fortify that, to strengthen the concept of ahinsa, we add sanyam. And to, add, to strengthen the concept of sanyam or restraint, we add the word tapa. So here today we will like to mention uh, something about tapa as described in our now tattvas. I will, I will very, this, this, this lecture is going to be a very, uh, very much as per the uh, discussion or the description given by, given by Uma Swatiji in chapter number seven of Tattva Sutra. I will stick to that particular chapter so that uh, we have a basic idea of what tapa means in uh, in our language, in our literature. Uh, please give me the uh, share slides. I'll just uh, put the slides. Uh, okay, Thimenba, is it visible? Can you see the slides? Yes, we can see the okay. slides. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, let's start with the first slide. What is meaning of tapa or austerities? Simple meaning of tapa is controlling your desire. What uh, uh, Okay. Controlling your desire, it's also known as 
इच्छा निरोधस्य तप कंट्रोलिंग योर डिजायर इच्छा इच्छा इज योर डिजायर्स एंड अवर फिफ्थ श्रावक व्रत और अणुव्रत इज ऑल्सो इच्छा मर्यादा सो तप इज ऑल्सो इंक्लूडेड इन टू ऑल अवर व्रत सॉरी नॉट से अंडरस्टैंडिंग तप इन जैन फिलोसॉफी तप रिफर्स टू स्पिरिचुअल हीट और पेनेंस इन जैनिज्म इट इन्वॉल्व attenuating spiritual vibration caused by karmic action and emotion the goal is to untangle these vibrations to achieve permanent peace this is the basic science of penances that when you do tap the vibrations occur into the occur into the atma pradesha and when these vibrations occur all those karmic particles which you have accumulated over over the years they get detached from the atma pradesha and the nirjara starts now try to remember one more thing when we talk about nirjara nirjara and samvar samvar is to stop the inflow of karmas and nirjara is to shed off your karmas both the things has to happen simultaneously you cannot think of having I, i mean imbibing the karmas and then getting rid of karmas imbibing the karma and getting rid of karmas that you don't reach at any place so the first step before nirjara is samvar obviously we have no time to discuss more about samvar but in short you are supposed to or we are supposed to follow five samitis three guptis 22 types of parishah jaya we have to follow what is the uh, monk यति धर्म और साधु धर्म वी आर सपोज टू अंडरस्टैंड ट्वेल्व भावनाज वी आर सपोज टू फॉलो फाइव कैंड ऑफ कंडक्ट और चारित्र नाउ दैट इज सवर सो दैट स्टार्ट बिफोर निर्जरा समटाइम यू नो इट हैपन्स दैट वी स्टार्ट थिंकिंग ऑफ तप विदाउट गिविंग एन इम्पॉर्टन्स टू सवर सो दैट शुड नॉट हैपन बिकॉज इट्स अ स्टेप बिफोर इफ आई वॉन्ट टू हैव माई डिग्री ऑफ मेडिकल साइंस I have to pass certain basic examination. Similarly, if I really want to do tapa, I really have to think of somewhere. That means no new karmic particles are coming to me. Now, in Jain philosophy or in Jain thought, tapas are divided into two major categories: one which is called bahya tap, and another which is called abhyanta tap. बाह्य it is a preparation it is a preparation to enter to the higher scaling so six kind of bahya tap are there and abhyantar tap are more related to mind and soul bahya tap are related more to the body and mind try to understand bahya taps are more related to body body includes our indriyas and mind abhyantar taps are related to the higher state of mind and soul this is how we differentiate bahya tapas and antrik tapa let me again repeat bahya tapas are of let, let's put it this you know if you if you put it into the uh, the intensity of the benefits which you can have bahya tapas have got very less benefit abhyantar tapa has got more benefit or spiritually they are on the higher scale so now there are six kind of bahya tapas and there are six kind of abhyantar tapa uh, let's enumerate them what is bahya tapa in a simple language the first which is called it anasan ansan obviously we usually use the word upavasa that means not to eat for a set period of time see sometimes people believe that for upas you are supposed to do it for one day minimum fine that's a tradition but suppose even there are people and there are friends 
Suppose he comes to my house and says that, will you like to have something? He says, no. Maru modu band chhe. Ketla vagya suti to ke saat vagya, chha vagya suti or whatever it is, you know. Ke maru tron kallak modu band chhe. So there are people who observe unsun for a for some time. Three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. You know, that's how you learn also to increase the, those hours for your unsun. That means during that period, you will not eat anything. You will not take anything. So unsun is not only for full day. It could be one day. It could be three days. It could be five days. It could be 10 days. You know, all that. But even it can be for one hour, two hour, three hours, five hours. So controlling your desire to eat for that particular time is called unsun. Second word is unodari. Unodari is eating less than needed. Now you might say that... Uh, how come unodari is, is considered to be the second? That means it is a bit higher than ansan. See, ansan could be for one hour, two hours, three hours. In unodari, the concept is that you have got things available with you. Suppose you are, you are uh, uh, sitting in a dining table and there are 10 things available to you. But you will eat less than what you need. Now, you know, that's a real control. That's a little difficult than unsun itself. And that's why unodari, unodari, I mean, I don't want to go into the detailing of the unod, 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 unod means, unod, I mean, our stomach, you know, less. So eating less than needed is little difficult or more difficult sometimes than unsun. And that's why it is kept as a higher level. After that, it is vritti sankshep. What is vritti sankshep is eating within the limits of predetermined restrictions. They're okay. I will eat only so many things. What we call uh, sometime, you know, dravya mariyada. That, okay, when I eat in the morning, I will eat five things, not more than five things. In the evening, I will eat only three things. So, you control your desires of eating various kinds of uh, uh, food, you know. I have a friend of mine. He was very, uh, obviously, he's no more now. But he was, you know, like encyclopedia of the food of Mumbai. He would say where the best vada is available. He would say where the best uh, sugar cane juice is available. He'll tell you where the best kachori is available. He'll tell you where the best uh, 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 bajia is available, you know. So even, you know, right in the corner of Thane or right in the corner of Kolaba, he would know the best places. And he will sometimes say that, okay, let's go there. So, they, you know, this is kind of the... Uh, uh, Desires which you have to indulge into eating of so many things. The fourth one is called Rasatyaga. Relinquishing tasty food. Now see, uh, uh, he said, what is wrong in having a tasty food? I'll come to all this uh, to make you understand that why the, it is important to have all this kind of restriction or sanyam. The fifth one is called Kaya Klesh. It's a penance whereby you tolerate the physical pain voluntarily. It's a training to the body for the steadiness. This steadiness is very, very essential for all our spiritual activities. You know, some, commonly sometimes what happens when we go for Pratikraman, we try to find out, okay, let's sit somewhere where there is a backrest or let's sit somewhere where the air is coming, you know, proper or, or things like that because we are not we are not tuned to sit proper in a proper posture even for one hour. Obviously, we are very tuned to sit on an easy chair like this for one hour, not for one hour, but eight hours. But when we are asked to sit on the floor in a steady position, upright position, we are not even be able to do that. So here, the Kaya Kales is training your body for the steadiness, which is very much required for all our uh, uh, spiritual activities. Now, uh, Salinata. See, Salinata is staying in a forlorn place and occupying minimum space with the control of your mind and body. Let's understand all these eight again in a very simple way. That yes, you control your food, your other desires, you train your body and also keep your mind cool. To enter into the higher territories of penances, it is very necessary that these basics are achieved. Like, you know, if I want to go for a prayer or a worship, I take a bath, 
I wear the clean clothes. I actually keep my mobile out. I So these are basic things because when I'm entering for a worship, I should not have all that with me. Similarly, when I want to enter or when we want to enter for the internal penances, the higher penances, it is very essential that we understand the external penances, the use of external penances and how these external penances are helping us as a preparatory state to enter to the higher penances. Obviously, uh, I will still go a little more detail on Bahaya Tapa, Ansan. Complete abstinence from eating any food or drinking liquid for a given time. Sometimes one can drink only achita water for a predetermined period of time, such as for a day or more. This spares our digestive system to focus on spiritual upliftment. This is also known as upavasa, meaning up upa is near and vas is to stay, meaning to stay near the soul, leaving all our pleasures of senses. I don't want to use the word sensual pleasure because in India, sensual pleasure is different meaning and in USA, the meaning of sensual pleasure is different. What I really mean is to stay near soul, leaving all the pleasures of all our senses. Unodari, commonly, eating at least 10% less than one's appetite at a given time. You can go more than that, but at least, you know, when you say unodari means Let's say that I required four chapatis and a little bit of rice. I cut down one chapati or one roti or cut down a little bit of my rice. So, you know, sometimes we say, my God, now I'm, I'm full, you know. Don't have that concept. Have something that, no, there is still <coughs> some appetite is remaining. That is called unodari. Vruti sankships. Limit on food and possessions. Now, see, Vritti Sankship does not mean only for the food. Vritti Sankship is also related to all your possessions. Limiting the number of food items while eating and limiting the possession of material things. Eating within the limits of predetermined restriction related to number of items, place, time and intention. Dravya, Kshetra, Kal and Ava. Rasaparityag or Rasatyag is again, you know, avoiding your tasty food. And the common sense example which we have got is I am being. Complete abstinence from eating or drinking juicy and tasty food such as buttermilk, butter, milk, tea, sweets, fried fruit, snacks, spices, food and juices. Also, one should eliminate junk food which has a little or no nutritional value. In other words, there is no attachment to the taste of food. We need to eat a minimum quantity of food to live a healthy life, but we do not need to eat food for taste and enjoyment. See, when somebody asked me that, do you follow Jain diet? I said, yes, I do follow Jain diet, but my definition of Jain diet is different. I said, what is, what is that? I said, yes, I do believe that we are not supposed to eat uh, uh, many things as prescribed in our scripture. But if I have to tell the definition of Jain diet to the youngsters or the to, to the youth, I used J-A-I-N. J stands for junk food. Avoid junk food. A, Ahinsa. See that there is non-violence in your, in your food intake. No food is prepared out of Somebody, uh, like see, uh, some people ask me, are you vegan or not? Are you, obviously, non-vegetarian is uh, something we don't have to think about. But even vegan or even vegetarian or eggs, we always say that it's fine. We don't want to go, go into the scientific understanding. It's my ethical practice not to eat anything where animals are tortured. In uh, milk production or in the egg production or in many productions, the animals or the living beings are tortured and I don't want to eat that. There is a concept of Vigai and Mahavigai. Milk, milk products are considered to be Mahavigai. That means they are banned as far as Jain uh, tradition is concerned. However, we have not given so much importance to the dairy product which we should have given. Kaya Kalesh. It's a penance tolerating physical pain voluntarily. One will fully subject himself to the sufferings of a body, even when one does not have, uh, have to 
and remaining undisturbed while experiencing experiencing the sufferings. This is the general term for all types of penance. Penance is required for uh, the kaya klesh or training your body is required for all penances. Activities include traveling barefoot in severe heat or cold weather and removal of hair by hand as practiced by Jain monks and nuns. The purpose is to train body to face adversities so that in such adversities also our spiritual advancement is not hampered. So kaya kales is training your body for the advancement of the spirit, I mean, so that your spiritual advancement is not hampered. Salinata, Salinata, giving up pleasures of five senses and controlling the passions. Staying for forlorn taste and occupying minimum space. There are four types of Salinata, Indriya Salinata, Kashaya Salinata, Yoga Salinata and Vivikat uh, uh, or uh, uh, Vyaya uh, Salinata and it is for the steadiness of mind and body. Now, understand the deeper meaning of external penance. See, what happens when we talk about uh, penances or external penances, mainly tapa, our focus is only on taste. That is not so. Here I have given you a small table and uh, I'll give you one or two examples so that you will understand. That when we talk about unsun, unsun is to avoid, right? Unsun meaning, simple meaning is to avoid. Unodari is to listen. Ruti Sangshept is to control wandering of desires. And Rasaparityag is to control the varieties of desires. Now, these are the practical meaning of our four words which we are using, unsun, Unodari, Ruti Sangshept and Rasaparityag. Now, here it does not mean only for the taste. It means for taste, it means for touch, it means for smell, it means for vision, and it also means for hearing. That is, say, to avoid the pleasure, to avoid the pleasure related to taste, touch, smell, vision, and hearing is called ansan. Our understanding of ansan is only related to the taste. That is not so. So here, with these four words, Ansan, Unodari, Vruti Sankshept and Ras Parityak. There are four types of penances for all five types of sensual pleasures or the pleasures of senses. Indriya Sanyam, sorry. Indriya Sanyam, there are total 20 of them, five into four. We usually do Ansan or avoid food or taste pleasure as very common penance. This is good beginning, but should remember that there are 20 penances related to control of our desires of senses. So, in, 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 just to understand that all these things are really to control the desires of our senses. It's not only related to food. I again want to drive to your, uh, your, your, your mind that tapa is not only related to our you know, kitchen or restaurant or the food. Obviously, I explained you about the Kaya Palace and all I also explained you Salinta. And sometimes I give a very practical example. That suppose I have to enter for an examination and there are 20 questions and I only attend 5 questions which are related to food and I do not attend another 15 questions. Will I pass in my exam? Obviously not. Now, sometimes a student asks us, you know, Sir, what is wrong in hearing good music? What is wrong in going to the nature and enjoy by your own eyes? Have certain kind of pleasures. Tifekar Parvatma has very clearly made us to understand this. That any pleasure related to your senses is addictive. Remember one word. Any pleasure related to our senses is addictive. You want it more and more and more and more. So what's, the, what's, what's wrong with that? Again, the question will be, he says that when you think about the pleasures of your senses, you forget the pleasure of your soul, the bliss of your soul. So if you want to go near to the bliss of the soul, you have to go away from the pleasures of the senses. Again, it's not that, you know, practically this all that may not be possible, so much possible. But if we really understand one thing that my, 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 
idea is to go nearer to my myself. My I want to go within. Then obviously you have to control your desires of your indriyas or your senses. You have to control your mind. You have to control your body. So controlling five indriyas, the pleasures of five indriyas or five senses with steadiness of body and with the steadiness of mind is called Bahya Tapa. Is called the preparative state to enter to the higher level or the higher aspects of penances. So now from external penances, we'll go to the internal penances. Now what are these internal penances? Obviously there's one more word which I have I'm trying to uh, give over here is that, uh, you know, uh, when we are doing a spiritual purification, food is very important. And it is scientifically very important because uh, controlling, the controlling of the food has got a lot of scientific importance. And there is one concept which is called autophagy. Uh, scientific study now affirms the health benefits deeply rooted in Jain practices. You know, there are clinics where the fasting is advised by a doctor under the medical supervision. And number of diseases can be cured by just fasting. I remember one of my case where the person was having, you know, a lot of uh, uh, allergic reaction and we couldn't identify which food he's allergic to. And then we advised him to do Imbil for uh, 15 days. And within 15 days, all his allergy had gone. I had to stop all the antihistaminics and the steroids which I have started. So yes, Fasting and kind of various fastings do help in various kind of diseases, which we call autoimmune disease. Fasting triggers autophagy, where the body recycles damaged cells. And obviously, uh, a person uh, from Japan, a scientist from Japan, got the Nobel Prize for this concept, which we usually call Chowyar in our uh, uh, Jain tradition. Uh, obviously, it uh, sets the uh, metabolic reset, normalizes the blood pressure, sugar level, and other vital health parameters. Our immune system is strengthened. It re regenerates the gut micro, uh, microbiota and enhances the mood. So these are the various uh, advantages of controlling our desire as far as the excessive uh, food is concerned. Now let's go to Abhyantar Tap. Abhyantar Tap are the penances where our focus is mind and soul. Now the focus is not body. I mean, focus is not uh, the sensual, uh, the sense organs. The focus goes on the upper upper level of mind. The first one, which is called prayas chitta, and prayas it consists of two common uh, fact, uh, common uh, factors. One is called pratikramana. Pratikraman or repentance of past misdeeds and pachkan or taking a vow of not repeating the same mistake. Now see, when we enter the territory of internal penances or the higher penances, the first is to, you know, mind, clean, your, clean up your mind, either for the guilt or for your desire to do violence. Pratikraman, Pratikraman is, you know, there's always a guilt feel, okay, I did like this, I did like this, you know. Then you ask for the forgiveness uh, from within air or from the people who are around. That is called Pratikraman. And also, you do Pachkan. Pachkan means you take a you take a vow that, okay, now I will not repeat this. So you're mentally purifying your mind. Your mental purification has started now to again go further into the Abhyantar Tapas. Then the the next one is called Vinaya. In a common term, we say Vinaya means respect for each and each, I mean respect the, respecting the other people. But uh, Vinaya is, is a basic word for non-violence. Not only I respect people, but I respect all the living beings of this universe. All the living, Ekindriya or it is Panchendriya, whether it is air, whether it is water, whether it is earth, whether it is plant, whether it is a sick, sick, any, a sick person or whether it is elderly people, whether they are my sadhu bhagwant or not, whatever it is, I respect each and every living being in whatever form it is. Now see, this is again, uh, you know, it looks simple as far as understanding is concerned. 
But do we really do that? That's very important aspect. Our respect, you know, usually we respect the people who are mainly, you know, nowadays people who are, or give a lot of importance to the people who have got a lot of wealth. Obviously, during Parushan or Chaturmas, there are people who will give a lot of importance to our Sadhu Bhagwan. There are people sometimes who will give the respect to people like us who have some knowledge about Jainism. But otherwise, our focus of respect usually goes to the uh, celebrities and wealthy people and all that. So we have to understand that respect actually should be to the people, to each and everyone, but mainly to the people who are helping you daily and who will elevate, elevate you spiritually. Then comes Vayavacha. Selfless service to monk, nuns and needy. Now I use the word needy. Vayavacha doesn't mean only services to the monk and nuns. It also includes needy. I remember one uh, sentence in, uh, in our literature. Gautam Swami asked, you know, that uh, I have a two, I have two options, whether to go down and come to serve you or I should go and serve the sick person. And Tithankar Paramatma is answering, Gilanam padiyarai so mamam padiyarai. Jo vyakti, the person who serves the poor and needy is my service. Or you know, usually we say manav seva hi prabhu seva hai. So this is the same wording which Tithanka Paramatma told to Gautam. So if you have an option to go for worship of Tithankaras and another option is to take care of the sick person either at the home or the near, near neighborhood, I feel Tithankar Paramatma has told us that yes, serving the people around you is equal to serving or worshipping Tithankaras or, uh, or our neighbor. So that is called Vayavacha Swadhyay. Of all the penances, as of now, in this particular time, Swadhyay is considered to be the most important or, or, or is considered to be the best one. Now what is uh, study of Swadhyay? What does it mean? Study of relig religious scripture. And there is a process by which you have to study. Will come into will 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 definitely come to that part. That there is a defined process by which you are supposed to do swadhyay. It is study of self, soul. Who am I? It's not only reading the literature. It's contemplating on certain basic questions about our self, our life, our purpose, all that. So that is called swadhyay. And obviously, to do swadhyay, you have to meet the people who are all around who knows a little bit of subject and you discuss with them. Dhyana, Dhyana is meditation on self and, and, and on its virtues. Some people say that my Atma Dhyana kar rao. So my question always goes, what do you mean by Atma Dhyana? It's like, it's, it, it looks good, you know, Atma Dhyana. But actually it is contemplating or focusing on yourself. What are its virtues and what are its uh, non-virtues also? So that is called dhyana. In dhyana, you are supposed to think about yourself. How good you are, how bad you are. What are the deeds that, that you are doing? And kayot sarga is obviously a very deep kind of meditation. Again, you know, swadhyay, dhyana and kayot sarga are types of meditation. These are the meditative practices of uh, Jain tradition. Kayot sarga or vich sarga is a deep meditation to the extent that one realizes that his body and soul are different entities which is also called Veda Vidyan. And here, renunciation of body through meditation, it doesn't mean, you know, body is thrown away, but it is with your deep meditation, you try to understand that, who am I? I am this pure soul. This body is just an incidentally there with me because of uh, karmas. Praya chitta. Praya means mistake for crime and chitta means remove. For the spiritual purification, one truly repents for bad deeds and the breach of vow that occurred in the past and truly commits not to repeat them in future. It has two components as I actually explained you. Pratikraman is repentance of possibly committed sins and Pachkan is taking the vow of not committing the sin again. Obviously, Vinay, as I told you, has got uh, 
It's a humility and proper behavior towards all living beings of universe, especially sadhu, sadhvijis, teachers, elders, co-workers, and poor. The most important part is there should be an egolessness. There should not be a mohaniya karma in this practice of vinaya. There are four types of vinaya uh, described. Jnana vinaya, darshan vinaya, charitra vinaya, and vyavar vinaya. Uh, Prayasthit and Vinay add further to the purification of the soul. As I told you in the beginning, Abhyantar Taps are more related to purification of mind and now the purification of the soul. So this is a gradual process. Why they are put into this chronology? Because that is the chronology by which we have to go to the higher level. Vayavach, as I already mentioned, one renders self-services to sadhu and sadhvijis, elderly, needy people and to those who are suffering. Here the service is absolutely without any expectation and it happens very naturally as the person at this stage is well up in the spiritual path. The person who is doing Vayavach has got to be you know, elevated or spiritually uh, uh, upgraded person. Here again, there is no ego and there is no attachment. My, my time is getting uh, over so I'll be a little fast. I want to keep some... Uh, uh, time for the questioning. Obviously, Swadhyaya has got five components. Vachana, which, which we call reading. Puchna is asking the question. Anupreksa is thinking deeply on the same subject. Paravartana is repeating and revising on the subject. And Dhammakata is believing and advising the principles and essence of Jainism. So these are the five stages of Swadhyaya. You know, sometimes we only at, uh, stop at one stage. Vachana, Vachana, Vachana. But then we don't understand and we don't ask the other people. So it has to follow all the five steps if you really want to do uh, Swadhyay properly. Repeating again. Padana hai, puchna hai, uske upar sochna hai, kai baar sochna hai, aur baad mein usko practice mein rakhna hai. Vachana, puchna, anupreksha, paravartana and dharma katha. Dhyan is again a deeper meditation where uh, you meditate on self, on its virtues. From Swadhyay, now seeker goes to deeper medication in search of true nature of his soul. He remains in Dharma Dhyan and tries to scale on Shukla Dhyan. This is how one can liberate uh, ourselves. However, Shukla Dhyan is not possible in this particular time. Time has its own uh, effect on our uh, spirituality. So, Shukla Dhyan is not possible nowadays. I'll tell you what is... Uh, see. Dhyan are described, four kind of dhyans are described. Raudra dhyan. Raudra dhyan means I am offensive to other people. In many ways. It's not only that I I, 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 I have a, some weapon in my house, in my hand and then do something. No. My verbally, my, by, by my thought, by exploitation. So this is the kind of raudra dhyan. I am hurting other people. The another one is called artha dhyan. Artha dhyan means by nature, I am such that I am unhappy for many things in my life. I have got so many good things, but still I am unhappy for the things which are not happening in my life. It's, you know, a self-pain. Uh, in inflicting the self-pain is called Artha Dhyan. The person who is in Dharma Dhyan remembers one thing in his life, that everything is happening because of the frozen of my karmas. And then he remains quiet on that. That, okay, something bad has gone. It's all because of the frozen of my karmas. Something very good has happened. It's all because of the frozen of my karmas. Yes, efforts are there. But both the things go together. So he keeps he, he keeps cool. Even in the uh, conditions which are favorable. Or even in the conditions which are unfavorable. That is what is called Dharma Dhyan. And we should try to focus. Obviously, Rodra Dhyan though we are not supposed to do. But we are mainly in Artha Dhyan. So instead of Artha Dhyan, if we think the concept of karmic particle and the karmas, we will be more over the dharma dhyan. Obviously, kaya sarga is a state by which you meditate so much that you understand that you are not body, your soul and body are two different things. Obviously, I don't want to go to the story of Maina Sundari and Sripal Raja. All of us know about the Kumar uh, 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 this ras, which is very common, commonly recited in our uh, uh, spiritual practices. Then there is a story of Punya Shavak. What is Tapa? I, I describe this by very few modern words. It's a war against will or desire. It's a war against will. 
it is body versus mind. My body needs something, but my mind doesn't want, doesn't want to do that or my soul doesn't want to do that. It is a measurement of our capacity to face pains and problems. Now, if you are doing certain kind of penances, it, it trains you to face pains and problems in your life. And again, when you start doing tapa or when you start doing penances, the 12 type of penances which you have described, it teaches us how to enhance our endurance. So friends, tap is non, not only a Thai, tap is not only masas khaman, but yes, tap is much more than that. You may not be able to dolo, uh, we may not be able to do some of those kind of tapa, but yes, there are other kind of tapa which you should, which we can try to do. They are also equally important and see, yatha shakti tapasya. That means you should try to do whatever is possible. As far as Ansan is concerned, Unodari is concerned, it's possible. It's not that it is impossible. If you try, it's very easy. So, Tapa is basically a path of purification by which your karmic particles, which you have accumulated over the period of time, last this, this life also and the previous life also, you get a chance to eradicate them. Those particles which are attached in this life are not still so much attached or they are probably, you know, loosely attached. These particles can be thrown away by indulging into the practices of penances. And as I described, 12 penances is a very simple concept of liberating yourself to the process of purification of your body, which starts first, then the purification of your mind and ultimately the purification of your soul. Purification of your body starts with the controlling the senses. The purification of your mind starts with controlling your uh, kind of guilt, kind of passions. And the purification of the soul starts when you go to the higher state and control all your passions. So this is about uh, Tapa. And uh, we'll uh, stop the slides there. And if you have any questions, I would like to answer those questions to the best of my ability. If anybody has a question, please uh, feel free. We have got some uh, 17, so 13 minutes. Somebody wrote in the beginning that give some time for questions. So uh, today I have uh, uh, this. So please uh, unmute yourself and ask the question to Dr. Doshi. If you have any question, I'm sure he has shared so much knowledge today. I'm sure you have many questions. We'll try to address as many as we can. Try to revise this from any of your scripture. There are a lot of material available on net about Tapa. And uh, at least as a, as a good Jain, you should know what the Tap mean and what are the 12 kinds of Tapa. At least their meaning in one word. I'm not saying that you go into the detail. But at least these names uh, should be remembered by us. Nitin Bhai. Yes. Is Samajya Tap? Haji? Is that a Tap? Samayik. Samayik is a kind of meditative practice. Dhyana. Samayik is included into Dhyana. Hmm. <laughs> yes, a good question. Where is Samaik? Samaik is too, Samaik is a part of Dhyana. See, there are, there are certain kind of, you know, we have a one specific lecture on meditative practices in Jainism. And that's where we start with Samaik. <laughs> it's a kind of Dhyana. Samaik, Pratikraman, Kausaga, these are all kind of meditative practices which we do. Okay. Do Bahiya Tap help shield the karmas? I thought only the Abhyantar Tap can help shield the karma. You know, it's a very important question. That if you want to go to internal penances, you have to start with Bahiya. You just can't enter into the territory of internal penances without control of your desire, without control of your on your senses, without the control of on your food, without the steadiness of your body and mind. How can you go to the higher penances? And that's why bhaiyatav, bhaiyatavs are not useless. 
Bhaiya Tafs are very important. It is preparing yourself to enter the higher directory of the uh, penances. Shriti is up. Shriti. Done. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yes, uh, Sumit. Mania, yeah. yes. Uh, Pinky. Uh, I'm I'm Pinky. I'm uh, Sumit's wife. Okay. Um, can can you uh, maybe help us understand if one person, um, I don't know if it's relevant to today's topic, but if one person feels they are uh, maybe in the uh, initial stages of the pick the uh, the first uh, the, the body uh, control of desires through the body. Yeah. But they are around relationships and friends who may not be at that level. Or they one person may be at a level where they are practicing and now are at the mind level of control. Um, how do you advise the people in the relationships when partners are at different level or parents and Mar children are at different levels? So no confrontation. Keep cool. People have their own way of thinking it. People have their own way of doing it. And they might think that this is not necessary. Let me go to my factory and help five people. So Samata. Samata is the only way of uh, avoiding confrontation, uh, especially when you're with your spouse. <laughs> Thank you. I understand your reasons. With family also. With <laughs> what, you wanted, what you wanted to tell between the line, I could understand that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes Soshi. also with parents, but thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Dr. Doshi, we have a question from uh, Jay Vora. <laughs> Do Baya Tap help shed the karma? I thought the only Abhyantar Tap can help shed, shed karma. Again, the same answer that you cannot enter into the territory of the Antrik Tapa or the internal penances unless and until you don't practice the external penances. There are people but, who say, I don't want to do fasting. I don't want to control my food habits and all that. But I'll do only prior chit. No, that's not right. You have to start from here and go higher level. And also, same. Uh, they had a question. If this was from any particular book that yes, you know you have shared the information. Tatvat Sutra, Uma Swati's Tatvat Sutra. It's a very simple book, and everyone should, at least in lifetime, should read Tatvat Sutra, and learn from people who know about it. Obviously, I am always available uh, anytime to discuss on any topic. You just put a message to me. But first, you should start reading. Huh? The people said, I always say that, I always say that, then I can only teach you. You don't want to read and straight away you want to learn from teacher. That's not right. Start learning it. Start reading it. And then whatever you cannot understand, you can ask me. Yes, there are Tattva Sutra available on e-library. All there are, it's available in Hindi, English, and uh, Gujarati. Chandrakant Bhai's Gujarati is very good. Hindi, there are many. English is Duliram Ji, Dr. Duliram Jain. So, Tattva Sutra is available in, I've got about uh, 20 type, 20 kinds of books on Tattva Sutra in my library. Mm -hmm. And also, also, Dr. Doshi, there is another question. Is it yes. important to take Pachkan Wow while doing any kind of tapasya, even like Unodri? Yes. See, why it is necessary? It's, it's, you know, it's a putting an extra lock on your desire. If somebody says that I have no time to go to Sutta Sadhu Bhagavan or I have no time to go to take Pachkan, it is fine. You mentally resolve. You make a mental resolution. That is also fine. But making a mental resolution always helps you to strengthen your desire of doing something which is spiritual. Okay. Someone has a hand raised. So please go ahead. Unmute yourself and ask the question, please. Hi there, Dr. Doshi. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Ami Mahesh and um, Pramila Shah. Um, my question is um, about some of the, the food practices in Jainism. And specifically, why is there such a um, uh, decision on, um, you know, what is considered uh, permissible in, uh, in a Jain diet? Um, I want to use the examples of tomatoes, peanuts, and potatoes. And the reason why I'm bringing up those three plants is that they are indigenous to the Americas. They were not indigenous to India. So those plants didn't exist 
you know, in the time of like Mahavir Bhagwan, but there's such a strong culinary tradition around using peanuts in Jainism, which grows underground, tomatoes that is considered permissible, potatoes that's not permissible. But these plants only arrived in India in the last, you know, 500 years at the most. I and think, so I was just always uh, curious I, about I, I, I the strong the philosophical beliefs about Jainism using plants that were not indigenous to India. Let me ask, very, let me answer this very simply. There are things written in our scripture about which our scientific knowledge either is against it or maybe something which does not match with that. Very simple. Like tomorrow, today I say that potato is anantakaya jiva and other, other vegetables are not anantakaya jiva. Obviously, you as a student or you as a student of bio, biology would ask me, what do you mean by this infinite jivas and what do you mean by non-infinite jiva? My, mm -hmm. my understanding is very simple. I, I feel that Tirthankar Paramatma has given us so many things and so much knowledge about which science is now gradually coming to that kind of knowledge or that kind of understanding. So probably this knowledge also which he gave not to use certain food item may be right. I, I just don't say 100%, but I said it may be right. And if I have an alternative, why not to practice whatever is my tradition? I have another alternative. It is not the essential part of my food. Potato is not an essential part of, part of my food. On the contrary, in Jain Indian tradition, potato is considered to be a uh, food which we, which we, you know, there are three kinds of food, Satvik, Tamsik and uh, Rajasik. Rajasik is a food which enhances your laziness. Potato is something which enhances your laziness. Lasun or the garlic and the uh, onions are something which enhances your Tamasik. That means you become aggressive. So even if I don't think about Jain, Jainism, let me think about the, the spiritual effect or the mental effect this food will have on my body. So that's why there are certain food like I am vegan. I don't eat many products. I don't eat potatoes or many things uh, because, you know, because there are alternatives available. If there are no alternatives available, like somebody asked me, what does the Eskimos in the uh, North Pole or South Pole will eat if they are not given the uh, meat? Because that's the part of their daily food. And the cold is so much, the vegetables are not available. Now you cannot have the excuses there because he has to survive. So he'll eat meat. You can't say that he's doing something bad. He, he has to survive. Similarly, we have to survive. And if I have to survive, and I, if I have an alternative available, where my tradition, see, if I'm if I have to be called Jain, I have to follow certain traditions. So if I want to follow my tradition, it's fine. I'm not again telling you compulsorily. But why do we focus so much on food items? <laughs> there is many things more in Jainism. Are you doing meditative practices? Are you doing samayak? Are you doing prayasit or pratikraman? Are you doing dhyana? Are you are you trying to control your desires of the senses? Are you trying to control your kashaya? Ask that question first. Now. Why do you want to focus only on potatoes and onions? I, I said, okay, fine. If you want to continue, continue. But understand that these foods are not good for our body. I was trying to tell you, Jain food, junk food to be avoided, ahimsa or non-violence to be followed, intoxicants should be avoided, and night food should be avoided. Jain, J-A-I-N, junk food, Ahinsa food, uh, intoxicants, <laughs> and lastly the uh, night night din. Uh, I mean night food. Good advice, yeah. Good. Jain. Thank Good advice. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And uh, there was there was some other hand raised, and then it was I think somebody took it out. If you still want to have yeah. a question, we can take one. One, or two one more point Enjoy. on this this thing, and our our sculpture says pindalu, which is like. You know, that time it was not alu, but it's pindalu means like anything which is similar to it. They're like multi-life thing. More like that was explained in our one of the sutra, which is Astanika and yeah, Tutva. Absolutely. But again, you know, uh, today the youth may not understand all this uh, language very well. Because again, they have not read the Agam and they probably may not have that much of faith. We have to tell them scientifically that, okay, traditionally, See, we follow a lot of traditions in our life. And why one more tradition? What's wrong? And okay, again, <laughs> you know, because, you know, we focus on only food items. Why do that? 
in some 10 parts of 10% of your non violence there are 90% of the other violence which you are getting into it avoid those violence first yeah hi my question a different question is in america we do a lot of like yoga meditation um and and it sounds very much like beyond right and so something in particular that is is big in in other countries is something called mindfulness and yeah. so the idea there is similar. You know how Mahavir Bhagwan did Atmanatiyan. And so it sort of sounds a lot like really looking introspection. Um, but the difference, of course, in like Pratikama and, and doing something like that is the slogs and the stavans and the stutis and all that. What do you think about that in terms of like in yeah, America? Unfortunately, unfortunately, we haven't popularized our meditative practices as much as we should have. The first of all, it's a fault on, fault on the part of our community. You know, Samaik is something which is so interesting and so important in our life. And if we really teach the youth to do Samaik, you know, it can really transform transform their life, not only from the from the spiritual point of view, but also from the materialistic point of view, their health, their uh, success, and many things can happen. happen. So, you know, there, the, the yoga has become very popular and Triksha Dhyan has, is becoming a little more popular and uh, Shishi Ravi Shankar is talking about the, uh, you know, the uh, life and uh, 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 all that, you know. So, those things are becoming more popular. Unfortunately, our, our monks does not travel everywhere and whenever they travel, they have a limited time. <laughs> yes, it is very important that we popularize the Jain medical meditative practices. But at the same time, even if you are doing yoga, even if you are doing prakshadan, even if you are doing uh, what uh, Shishi Ravi Shankar is teaching, fine, it's fine. It's nothing. You are doing something which is as similar as what Tirthankar Paramatma has told us. So I think we have we have run the course of you know today's session, and just to also add to your question. Uh, uh, answer Dr. Doshi. Jaina is going to have a Jain meditation practices about six mm -hmm. to eight that we have identified. We are going to have a session starting in October for three months. We will have theory and practicals. Uh, we will do that online. So please stay tuned for that, inform uh, that information. And, my, and my, my, my little addition here would be that it should be supported with scientific evidences so that the youth can uh, you know relate with that. Absolutely, absolutely. We are getting done accordingly. Thank you, Dr. Doshi. And so again, Pupko Banu Modma, Dr. Doshi, for sharing lots of uh, information today. It was enlightening uh, to have, uh, you know, explain importance of TAP and further explaining all the aspects of it. So tomorrow's session is going to be salient features of Jainism and Jainusha, Jaina Parishan sessions. Recording will be available for your review on Jaina YouTube channel. And we thank Jaina volunteers involved in many co community activities, as you might have seen on the screen, and also bringing the sessions like this today. Kupko Banumadna to all the volunteers. And Dr. Doshi, if you would like, uh, if you can say uh, Mangalik, please. Namo Oriyantanang, Namo Siddhanang, Namo Ayriyanang, Namo Vajjanang, Namo Lohe Savasaunang, Iso Panchanamukkaro. Sava Pao Panasano, Mangalanam Chasavesi, Padamavai Manglam, Padava Mahavai Manglam, Chatari Mangla Marianta Manglam, Sida Manglam, Sahu Manglam, Jedi Panato, Dhammo Manglam, Chatari Logutama, Arianta Logutama, Sida Logutama, Sahu Logutama, Kiri Panato, Dhammo Logutama, Chatari Sharnam Pojami, Ariente Sharnam Pojami, Sida Sharnam Pojami, Sahu Sharnam Pojami, Kiri Panato, Dhammo Sharnam Pojami. चार शना करे जे भवसागर मा नव डुबे ते सकल कर्मनो आने अंत मुक्स तना सुगले अदत। भाव धरीने जे गुन गाये ते जीव तरीने मुक्से जाये संसार माई सरना चार अवर शर्निक। जे नरनारी आदरे तेने अक्से यवी चड़पद होई। अंगूठे अम्रत पसे लबदी तना � Judge in to all. Thank you everyone. I'm ending this meeting for all.